Great. Uh, welcome to documentation office hours here for the Jenkins project. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. Uh, today, it looks like as of right now, it's myself, Mark Waite, uh, and Bruno Rockton are in the meeting. And as far as the agenda goes, we have a couple of action items, uh, some information about the Jenkins governance board elections, a uh, small note about DevOps World 2022. We have uh, great news for our releases this week. Uh, and then our next release as well, the LTS uh, for the November 30th release, AKA the December release. Uh, and ultimately, since it is November 3rd, Hacktoberfest has ended and we want to share some of the stats that we um, have from uh, the last month and highlight some of the contributions that were made to the Jenkins uh, documentation specifically. Uh, anything else that needs to be added to the agenda? Or does that cover everything for uh, the time being? Covers all the topics I wanted. Same for me. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, first action item, uh, Mark archiving the docs mailing list and switching to community.jenkins.io. Um, I know that's uh, gonna be uh, TBD right now since you just got back right. and so have plenty to catch up on. Not, not done yet. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, and then the other action item is that we have the monthly Jenkins newsletter now. Um, September, the uh, September edition that came out in October was the first version. We're gonna have the October uh, edition published soon. Um, it's open for a review. So uh, yep. that will be coming um, published in a little while, uh, relatively soon. Um, one thing to note, this isn't a typical newsletter that's emailed out. This is actually a blog post from the Jenkins community blog. Uh, so uh, as we have it here, uh, just to show you. So we have uh, the lovely Jenkins newsletter and all the updates from the different SIGs. So uh, this is a great way to find out what we've been doing over the last month and a chance for us to share uh, some of the highlights and uh, new, new fun, fun new things that uh, Jenkins has to offer. Uh, and as we start to have multiple editions of it, uh, we will be able to have uh, tags and specific filtering for it. So it, it will be a lot more connected once we actually have things to connect. So uh, due time will be very exciting. Uh, next item on the list that I had was Jenkins Governance Board elections. Uh, this uh, has been open now. Um, it opened on October 20th, so uh, voter registration is open and candidate nomination is open as well. Uh, there's a blog post from the community page to uh, go over and share instructions on how to register for voting, how to sh uh, share nominations, uh, and among other things, and just some more information about uh, what we're looking for and what we're hoping to do and what the elections are all about. Um, if you have previously registered to vote last election, you still need to uh, register this year as the groups that we're using is a different, it's a different group from last year. Uh, so um, we wanna make sure that everyone has a chance to participate. This is really important for the future of Jenkins and important for uh, every user of Jenkins to have a voice and, sh and share um, you know, in the future of it and, and decide what uh, gets to happen. So. Uh, by all means, if you have questions about registering to vote or voting, uh, we have the blog post here again that goes over it. We have a thread in the community discourse channel as well so that uh, there are multiple points of entry. Uh, I will say though that the community thread for some reason does not include the voting information here. Uh, so um, this is uh, totally true and real, I promise. Um, and this is how you can register to vote and we'll uh, get that information so out there Kevin, as well. Kevin, if you click yeah. that election voter 2022 group, I think mm -hmm. it'd help people who see the recording to see this is where they end up. And that yep. top right-hand corner where the button says leave on Kevin's page for a new arrival would say join. Mm -hmm. And and that's how, you, that's how you become a voter. Very straightforward. And uh, if you don't already have an account for community.jenkins.io, which uh, is okay. You can use your GitHub account and make life easy for yourself, or you can create a new account uh, and dedicate it for community.jenkins.io. But the important thing is having an account here so that you can participate. 
And is there some kind of calendar anywhere to remember me when to vote? I know we don't have the emails of the person who registered on that group so that we won't be able to send them a reminder email. Please vote. It's open now. So um, actually, I think I think we the administrators of that list. So Damien Duporto and Olivier Vernon have the email addresses and use it to send a link to the to the voting. Oh, okay, cool. It just mm -hmm. you're right, it's not visible to the rest of us. And that's a good thing. It shouldn't be yeah, visible. For, for sure. Us. But yeah. the email address for the user is is available to those list administrators and that's how they will send the notice. I think that's how I received notice last year with this same process was the mm -hmm. invitation to vote and said, hey Here's your voting link to the Condorcet Internet Voting System. Please vote. Okay, nice. Thank you. Yep. And uh, from what I've read and what is what I was seeing, that, that lines up exactly with uh, how it'll work this year. So uh, I think Mark's onto something there. And uh, even if we don't have them right here, someone d does have it. Most importantly, and uh, there will be notifications. Um, as far as the deadlines and timeframes for the elections itself. Um, we do have the blog post. Uh, we have the events calendar for Jenkins, which I think these might need to be added to it. But uh, at the end of the day, that's something we can do pretty easily. So there are lots of different places that you'll either get reminded of, get notified by, or uh, can check in with at any point in time to make sure. Um, and uh, there should be an additional email notification uh, going out to the De Jenkins developer mailing list, letting them know about the election. Uh, I think that's one of the few places that we didn't post about it yet. So uh, that still needs to happen as well. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, and yeah, just a, once again, just the fact that if even if you had registered last year for the election, this year is a different group. So please make sure that you register once again um, so that you can participate. And uh, right now, the, ten the date for candidates being announced and voting to actually start is November 17th. So we still have a couple weeks uh, and uh, we are accepting all nominations. So please, by, by all means, uh, if you have anyone in mind that you'd like to see be recognized, please share that. Um, and instructions for that can also be found here. Um, this is the Jenkins Election Committee group. Uh, you'll see less people here, but this is where you would send a message uh, saying who you want to elect, position, why, etc. Uh, and that just goes that much further in helping us uh, determine who should be a part of the board. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, next on the list is DevOps World 2022. Uh, that's now happening next Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, it's online completely, so registration is available and open. Uh, it's uh, two different time frames, so uh, one for APAC and one for uh, EMEA, and so that you, everyone can join in if they have a time frame that works for them. They tried their very best to find that time specifically uh, and cover as much as they possibly can. Uh, it's only a four-hour event this time uh, due to the truncated nature of things and that we're not meeting in person for this. Uh, so. It's a little bit more condensed, but all the talks and um, everything that will be happening has been really uh, filtered out and selected uh, based on how effective it's going to be and how, how uh, useful it can be to the community. Um, DevOps World 2022 is also no charge uh, since it's online. And even more of a reason to join. There's very few reasons to not, uh, and you can even you go to a talk given by Bruno, which is really exciting. Uh, no, uh, no, I won't. No, no, <laughs> I won't give my talk in this all night event. It hasn't been saved for this one, but that's not a problem. I think I will make uh, lots of videos with this talk material in the following weeks or months. So you will be uh, soon fed up with seeing me just about everywhere talking about that. <laughs> just kidding. Um, one thing I would like to know if people uh, can't make it to the online event, do you know if the videos will be available on video on demand later on or not? That one I'm actually I not, not sure. Uh, I think I would expect they will be because mm -hmm. uh, it's been typical that they were, but I don't know for sure. Okay. 
would make sense yeah. anyhow. Thank yeah. you. And, and I'd imagined they are recording, even if it's not posted, just for their own personal reasons or like their own organization reasons and whatnot. Um, I, it'd probably just be a matter of whether or not it's available to publicly after the fact. But um, that all that being said, sorry for uh, suggesting that you're talking at that, Bruno. My bad. Uh, no problem. I just know, <laughs> Um, many of the talks were scheduled for Orlando, but cannot be included. Just, it's a very different format now. Things had to be uh, remixed and revised. So uh, it's a little different, but um, we're still trying to figure out ways to get those talks to happen. There's several uh, online Jenkins meetups that can happen. We have other ways to organize events through Jenkins. Um, in fact, it's one of the uh, ways to participate in Jenkins is organizing uh, and scheduling events like that. So uh, if you'd like to contribute to Jenkins without having to write any code or, you know, do something technical, that's another great way to help the community, um, you know, continue to expand and uh, feel empowered. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, so the weekly release 2.376 and our LTS release of 2.361.3 were uh, occurred earlier this week, yesterday and Tuesday. Uh, everything went well and, and was successful. And today, uh, Mark and Darren will have a live stream to go over uh, all the new stuff in 2.361.3. Uh, so that'll be happening from, uh, what, uh, what time does that start at, Mark? Good question. Uh, I think it's two hours from now. Let me look. Okay. It is about two hours from now. Yes. All right. Perfect. So about two hours from now, Mark and Darren are going to be doing a live stream. Join if you want. It's fun. It's good. It's nice and informative to just get a better idea of what's changing and what new things are coming uh, or have come along now that the release is live. Uh, we'll also have our next LTS uh, at the end of November, but it will be the December LTS. Uh, but it's going to be 2.375.1. Uh, the baseline has been selected via the developer mailing list conversation and thread that was started. Uh, and just because all the changes and fixes and uh, new stuff that came along with the 2.375 release, uh, we're looking at that as the baseline and using that to go from. Uh, the LTS change log and upgrade guide would be needed, of course. Uh, there's a lot to go over and review. So uh, the changes from uh, since 2.361 will take up a good chunk of it. And then there will be so plenty of backports as well. So uh, lots of info to come on that. And we'll be working, uh, you know, the, the entire team will be working to get that taken care of and sorted. All right. And then finally, uh, Oktoberfest 2022 has concluded. It's now November. Um, but what a year. Uh, we had 117 first-time contributors uh, that have now been put through the ringer and are way better at this than they could have ever been before. Uh, they submitted 613 eligible pull requests, which is uh, ridiculous. That's a super high number. And I mean, uh, it's just incredible. Thank you to everyone that participated and contributed. Um, there are still a few that need to get merged, but for the most part, um, 531 have been completely merged, uh, accepted, and that's just incredible. Uh, 95 different contributors uh, were able to participate and help us out, uh, and 42 of them uh, were able to get enough pull requests merged and work contributed that uh, they'll get a Jenkins t-shirt or a tree planted in their name. Yeah, really not exciting a Jenkins, stuff. Not a Jenkins t-shirt, a Hacktoberfest t-shirt. Ah, Oktoberfest t-shirt. That makes more sense. Uh, and then just a little stat from an overall Jenkins uh, perspective, but there were a total of 1,183 uh, manually created pull requests submitted during October in, the two, in Jenkins CI and Jenkins Infra organizations. Uh, that's an incredible number. And uh, talking with Mark yesterday, uh, or the day before, we realized that you know we we got to almost triple digits for submissions during October alone, uh, which is just breathtaking to say the least. Um, 
and then uh, once uh, we have a chance to recap and connect in the line, uh, Jean-Marc Mathen and myself will be working on blog posts that will recap Oktoberfest. And what we're going to do with that is share some further information and stats. Uh, but we also want to highlight user stories and experiences from Hacktoberfest. This is very valuable and goes a long way in encouraging people to contribute and be a part of Jenkins and just open source in general. Um, and for the rest of the time today, I wanted to just take a look and highlight some of the contributions that were made that um, went beyond what I would have expected for assistance and, and contributions in um, such a short time frame. Uh, first up is uh, Chris Stern, who's been actually helping out with the releases uh, recently. In the last few months, he's been the release lead uh, and he has organized some of the, um, the couple of the LTSs, which has been great. He's developed a lot uh, and he's went ahead and actually updated the navigation for some of our uh, developer documentation, as well as some of the Jenkins um, managing uh, proxy configuration navigation. Um, uh, so, for instance, uh, all of these links are now uh, singular size, space, everything. Uh, it's a lot cleaner, and it's a lot easier to just navigate through the developer docs uh, before it would change and fluctuate a little bit, and it was tougher to find things. Now it's a lot more aligned, and um, yeah, it just, I just, it just looks a lot nicer and cleaner. And yeah, oh, we also got this updated too to make sure that uh, the Java docs are only showing most recent uh, releases or the five most recent releases so that um, this is uh, applicable and, and workable for everyone. Uh, and then in addition to the developer documentation, uh, Chris also made it so that the reverse proxy configuration pages are all nested now. Uh, one less thing to take up room on the side navigation here. Uh, but when you need to go to it, everything's still available. They've all been really nicely placed and nested here. Uh, and when you go to it, you get all the same information as previously. Uh, just, again, the navigation is just that much better now. So big thank you to Chris for all of your work and help and, and contributions during Oktoberfest uh, and beyond. Uh, Tanuj uh, is another one of our Hacktoberfest participants who ended up creating a lot uh, or improving a lot of the Kubernetes information that we um, didn't have before. Uh, so now we have a full page of installing Kubernetes, installing Jenkins on Kubernetes uh, with a bunch of great resources, steps, um, examples, tests, everything that you might need. Uh, Tanuj has gone through great lengths to compose all this and get it put together. Uh, and we've had several reviews throughout the community to make sure that everything's good to go and correct. Uh, I can say that I went through and tested a good chunk of this and everything seems to work properly. So uh, a huge win for Jenkins as a whole. And again, big, big thanks to Tanuj for creating and adding all this uh, value to Jenkins and to the documentation. Of course, I found it pretty intimidating before that documentation to start Kubernetes with Jenkins. And now I've, I have a place to go to. That's fantastic. Great. Super. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I, like you said, Bruno, it wasn't there before and now we have it. So uh, this is now a, a real resource for folks to use and install. If, that's, if they want to use Kubernetes, uh, we can actually give them that assistance, which is amazing. So uh, yeah, so again, big thanks to Tanush. This was really great and added a lot of useful information. Uh, and then the last uh, person that I would like to uh, highlight here today is uh, Thea Mojimbadzi. I'm, I'm sorry if I butchered that. Um, but uh, Thea was actually able to create some new logos and artwork for Jenkins, which is awesome because that's just a totally different um, kind of contribution than we have seen with Tanuj and Chris, but uh, it's still a very important and very useful contribution because this allows us to connect with communities all over the world and uh, just uh, that outreach becomes more accessible when we can actually and genuinely uh, share with people and check in with people and connect with, uh, you know, even uh, something as simple as a logo means a lot. Um, we have our current messaging about Ukraine and our support there on the page. So this is just another uh, step in that line to cons um, solidify Jenkins as a universal open, open source uh, 
community and, pro and project. Uh, big thanks to Thea again for the logos and contributions, very much appreciated. Um, and I, I'm fairly positive that Jean-Marc uh, Messin, who was the main organizer for uh, Hectoberfest with Jenkins and Cloudbees, uh, will be, has either reached out or uh, will be chatting shortly about some more information and getting more stories from these folks as well. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to go over or any other ideas that might have come up during the meeting? Nothing from me. Thanks very much. Okay. Nothing from me either. Thank you very much. All right, then. Uh, so I think we're, that means we can go ahead and uh, finish up the recording for today.